And you come and stand in quite a wide stance, so I know you might need to turn sideways, some of you, to move the outer space, see how it is. Make your toes are pointing out a little bit more than the heels, so the feet aren't straight, they're definitely turning out. Imagine you're trying to get your shoulders to the wall behind you. The knees are going to bend. Try and get the knee over the little toe. It won't go that far, probably, but that will encourage this area to open. So we're in that nice upright position, open across the chest, knees nice and wide. If this doesn't feel good for you, make it a smaller stance. Can we do a little dance? Well done. Good. If we can breathe and smile at the same time, that would be lovely. Five, four, three, two, one. Hold at the bottom. Come an inch lower if you can. How is it if one heel lifts and lowers? Other heel lifts and lowers. Both heels lift and lower. Good. Repeat if you can. One heel. Other heel. Both. Last time, one heel, other heel, both. Can we keep the heels lifted? Get an inch lower, breathe, smile, lower the heels, and have a little walk back in. Isn't that a nice one? Well done. We're going to come back to that hip distance position or feet a little wider if it feels more natural for you. Imagine there's a box in front of us, we're going to be picking up, so think about that good functional squat technique. Bum goes back, look over the cliff, bend the knees, imagine picking up a heavy object, come up, squeeze the glutes, growing tall. Good, and again, bum goes back, pick up a heavy object, lovely, and if you're happy to, as you stand, come up, Heels lift, calf raise. Lovely, well done. So keep the head in line with the spine. I'll just show you sideways on as well. Just so make sure the head's in line with the spine. So you're not looking up or down. Head's in line with the spine. Good, well done. Keep going. Can we hold at the bottom of the next one? Remember, if you'd rather stay with that constant movement, please do. How is it if both heels lift and hover? Three, smile. Good. Can we slowly lift? Three, two, one. Squeeze the glutes, lower the heels. And again, come to that squat. Let the heels lift and hover if it's for you. Slowly stand. Four, three, two, one. Squeeze the glutes, lower down. Last one. Hold at the bottom. Heels lift if we can. Slowly stand. Five, three, two, one. Lower down and have a little shake. Fantastic. We're going to come to a position, so we've still got the feet at that hip distance, but we're going to let the weight come into one foot, squeeze that glue, can the other foot lift? And if you can, try and keep this leg sort of quite free. It's not going to touch down, but it's going to move to help our balance. We're going to do that squat again, but try and get on one leg if it's available. So think about the bum going back, Bend that knee, pick up that heavy object, come up, squeeze the glue. Great work. Can we do two more on the same leg? Try not to put the foot down if you can. Lovely. <laughs> Last one. Definitely a tricky one. Well done. Um, great work. And then the good news is, is that that was probably your better side. So it'll be even more fun on the other side because that might be what we Little shake, let the weight come into the other foot. Squeeze the glue, let the foot lift. Think about that bum going back. Hip hinge, pick up that heavy object. 
come up, squeeze the glute, grow tall, lovely. Two more. Really think about growing tall in between each one. Whatever you are doing, standing, sitting, driving, always try to grow tall. Great work. Lower down, little shake, and we're going to come to an upright kneeling position when you are ready. So take your time, you might need to add a cushion for any knee issues. Knees are hip distance if we want, so we've got a gap between the knees and the feet be comfortable. Good. So growing tall, shoulders back and neck. Let the hands lift to a prayer position. Try and just put a bit of pressure against the hands just to try and feel the shoulders connect at the back. Keep your chin in line with your fingers. Rotate to one side. Back to the center. Rotate to the other. Lovely. Good. Keep that pelvis facing forward, so it's just the movement in the upper body if you can. So a headlight on each hip bone, shining forward. Good. We're going to do a little bit more rotation later on, so this is just a nice way to get our spines mobilised. Just in this upright kneeling position can be quite tall. Good. Last one or two, please. Looking good, everyone. Back to the centre. We're going to come to a shell stretch. You might prefer knees together or knees apart, whichever is better. Bum to heels. Let your hands extend away. Excuse me, just grabbing the drink. So you're trying to get your bum as close to your heels as you can. To open the lumbar spine and try and get your fingertips as far away from you as you can to open the shoulders. Good, well done. We're going to come to all the fours when you're ready. Knees under the hips, wrists under shoulders, strong in that upper body, belt drawing in. Remember that tray of drinks on your back. From one hand, opposite knee and lower leg, lift and hover, lower down and switch. Good. Well done. Holding each side a little bit longer if that's available, keeping it that nice slow movement, remember? Trying definitely not to spill any of those drinks balanced on our back. If one side's a bit wobblier, can we do our last stretch all on that wobblier side, please? Well done. Great work. Then when you are done, come back to that shell stretch, bump to heels, let your hands extend away. You might feel your bum get a bit closer to your heels this time. You might feel your hands extend away a bit further too. See how it is for you. Good. Keep those arms nice and straight. Put one hand come to the side of the mat where the mat meets the floor. Pop the other hand on top. Feel that stretch down the side of the body. Good. Switching side, please. Well done. Coming back to the centre when you are ready. We're going to come to an all fours position again, but just make sure, please, that you've got room for your left leg to go behind you. Try and make sure it's your left leg, otherwise we might fall over if it goes a bit more. So definitely try and make sure your left leg is extended behind you, toes firmly into the mat. Can your right hand lift up off the mat? This should be off the lips, you shouldn't be falling over, looking good. When you are ready, thread the needle, so bend the left elbow, try and get the right shoulder to the mat, and then lift up, 
Try and get that hand to the ceiling. Do you want a breathing pattern? Inhale to thread the needle. Exhale to push up. Six more, please. Good. And really trying to extend and open the chest, back and shoulders. More each time. Good. And we've got some lovely synchronization. It is nice for everyone this time. Good. Well done. If you are at a different pace or you've lost count, last one or two. And then take your time when you are done. You might need to give someone a little wave with that supporting wrist just to give it a breather. And then we're going to switch sides to do the opposite side. So this time, letting your right leg extend behind. So those right toes are down in the back. Good. Let that left hand lift up. So we're doing opposite. When you are ready, thread the needle. And extend up. Good. Inhale to thread. Exhale to lift. Six more, please. Good. Well done, everyone. Nice way to get that thoracic spine open, that stretch across the chest. Last couple for most of us. Well done. And then when you are done, lower down. That wrist might need a little way. See how it is. We're going to come to a position on our elbows just to give our wrists a breather. Check you've still got a bit of room behind you. So we're coming down to elbows. We've got knees underneath hips and we're quite strong in that upper body. Good. We're going to think about either keeping our feet flat as they are now, the toes, or tuck toes under if that's better. Let the weight come a little bit further forward over the hands. Engage abdominals, can both knees lift and hover. Breathe, smile, think nice thoughts. Hold for as long or as not long as you would like before lowering and having a rest. Good. So for some of us, this will definitely be enough. Any back issues, this is probably the one for you to stick with. However, I know that some of you have done this next move before, so as long as it's okay, you are welcome to add it in. To work harder, come forward, knees lift and hover. Let one leg extend, other leg extend, bum drops to a straight line, breathe. Let the bum go back up, one knee, other knee, and left. So choosing your torture, either knees just lifting and hovering, or knees lifting and hovering, one leg, other drop, come back up, one knee, other lower. As long as you breathe, that's the important thing. Keep going for it. Give me just grabbing a drink. Looking good, everyone. Good. And we're coming to our last two. So either holding your position a little bit longer or coming to your last ones. And then when you are done, take your time, but just do some circles with the shoulders just to release off any pressure through them because we did do quite a bit of loading through them. Well done. If you've got a roller or you've made your own, own roller, we're going to lay it down the mat. When we come to laying, even if your 
haven't got a roller at all, it's absolutely fine. If your thumb's going to go to one end, check that when you lay down your head supported, and whether you're using the roller or not, just make sure there's room for your hands to go above your head. And when you are ready, just have a little lay down. Now, if this doesn't feel nice on your back, don't feel that you have to keep using it. You can always get rid of it and work on the mat at any point. How is it if feet and knees come together? If that makes you wobble too much, they're fine to go wider. Let the arms lift and hover, and the hands cross across the chest. Again, if that makes you wobble too much, it's fine to pop them down. Remember, we've got a big different range in here. Some people on the mats, some people on a makeshift roller, some people on a real roller, so it will feel different there. In this position, can we do some diaphragmatic breathing? So keep the rib cage still. Inhale through the nose, tummy expands. Exhale through the mouth. Inhale, tummy expands. Exhale through the mouth. Good. Great work. So we know this diaphragmatic breathing, this belly breathing, trying to keep it as deep as we can. Good. Last two, please. Great work, well done. Remember if feet and knees together is too wobbly, let them come wider instead. When you are ready, can both arms reach up and try and touch the feet. Reach, 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 shoulders drop. And again, reach, shoulders drop. Last one, reach, shoulders drop. Good, check the palms of your hands are facing each other. Can one arm go above your head, other arm go down by your side and switch. Good, so if you are on a roller or a towel, this might feel different to other weeks when we've done it flat on the mat because your spine is lifted. So it might be further for that thumb to go overhead. Ideally, the thumb would touch down to the floor above your head at the same time as the little finger touches down at the side of you. However, we're all built differently. Mild discomfort, okay. Anything too torturous, please just make sure you don't push the shoulder any more than it wants to go if it's causing you a lot of discomfort. Mild discomfort's okay. That's why I often say tension, not torture. If that thumb can touch down at the same time above your head, and the little finger on the other hand at the side of you, fantastic. One side might be easier than the other. Lovely. Last couple, please. Check you finish evenly. Then we're going to let the arms come down by your side. Elbows on the mat, hands on that hip, pelvis area if we can. Can feet come to hip distance? Imagine that egg cup full of water on each hip bone. Make sure we are not spilling it. Let one foot lift up off the mat, just an inch to start and lower. Other foot lifts an inch and lowers. Good. So just by keeping it small to start with, it means you can focus a bit more on that pelvic stability. Check we're not spilling the egg cup of water. And if you are happy to work harder, the foot can lift a little higher, so the knees directly above the hip before lowering the foot back down. Good, so it's just as though we're marching in treacle, slowly lifting the foot up, slowly pushing it down. Now, depending on the surface that you are on, 
then that will feel different to a roller, for example. How is it if we do this with elbows lifting and hovering? One side might suddenly feel different to the other. I know when I do this, I discover a side that feels a little bit wobblier. If you're on the mat, you might not notice it as much. If you're on a makeshift roller, it can depend on how well you made your roller, basically. Good, but keeping it slow. And if one side does definitely feel a bit wobblier, now you've got yourself with those arms lifted. We're going to do our last three-ish on that wobblier side if we can. So if we've got a wobbly side, doing our last few on there, can help even us up. Strength work, we try and do evenly, but stability work, definitely worth a few more on a wobbly side. Good, well done. We're going to come back to some upper body work next. Feet and knees together will make you have to work harder. Be wider, gives you a much more stable base, so choose what's better for you. Can the arms lift, bend the elbows, look at the palms of your hands as though they're the pages of a book. Little fingers will touch, elbows may or may not, depending on what other body parts might be in the way later. Let your arms open so the backs of the hands go down towards the floor. And then let the arms come back into that starting position. Good. So keep it slow and controlled to start with. This just encourages more opening across the chest. Having something underneath your spine means your arms have further to go. So it might be, do you notice that your fingertips can touch the floor? Fine if not, but we might get a bit further each time. Can your elbows touch down? Can your whole hands? Can your wrists just be aware for you? Are your arms even? If we've got any shoulder impingements, that might explain why not. Otherwise, one size often works differently to the other, so it might behave. If it feels okay, can we hold out in that furthest position? So just try and take some deep breaths as long as it feels okay to do so. Good, so it might be that the elbows get a bit closer to the floor, the fingertips might, the hands might. Good, well done. Remember, tension, not torture. Only if it feels okay with your arms in this widest position, can your fingertips get a bit closer to the skirting board above your head and then let them come down a little bit. So you're almost polishing your floor by keeping your arms as close to the floor as you can. And I always call them sticky bits. So if you find a bit that feels a bit sticky and not as pleasant, can you hold for an extra couple of seconds on that sticky bit? Good, well done. Last couple of seconds or a couple of movements. And then when you are ready, let the arms come back down by your side. So elbows are onto the mat, hands are on that pelvis again. Good. Can feet and knees come together? Even if you're feeling a bit wobbly, absolutely fine because your elbows are down to support you. One knee is pointing up to the ceiling. We're going to keep that leg there, but the other knee is going to drop out to the side. Keep the pelvis level. Let that leg come back in. Other leg drops out and comes back. Good. So remember, a cup full of water that we don't want to spill. If you feel the pelvis start to tick, it can be that your legs are a little bit too far. This is looking nice and stable, everyone. Well done. Again, depending on your surface, depending on how you found it last time, 
If you want to try this with arms lifting and hovering, it is a little bit harder than the one you did before because the way that the leg moves out means it moves away from the center line of the body, so gravity makes it a bit harder. Please remember to breathe. Brilliant work. Well done. And again, if one side's a bit harder, can we do our last three-ish on that wobblier side if we've got one? Perfect. Great work, everyone. And then when you are done, lower down, we're going to do one last one with upper body. So again, feet and knees together is harder. The wider your feet, the more stable you will be. When you are ready, reach up, touch the ceiling again, shoulders drop. This time, check the palms of your hands are facing each other. Can both arms go above your head? Thumbs touch down as close to the floor as you can. Start to bend the elbows, but keep the arms as close to the floor as you can. Elbows will eventually come into your waist. Hands by your side. Breathe if you forgot, because it can be a bit unpleasant. So reaching up, shoulders drop. Both arms go above your head. And then starting to bend the arms. Elbows coming to your waist, hands down by your side before you go again. Well done. So keep going. Try and make sure the rib cage is staying where it is. It's not trying to get to the ceiling. And if there are any bits that feel a bit more sore and tender, what I call sticky bits, can you just hold on that sticky bit a little bit longer? Breathe, think nice thoughts before carrying on. So some of us have more sticky bits than others, you might notice. And if you spend more time maybe working from home with not as good a desk or computer set up as you're used to, this is a lovely way of getting that stretch across the chest because we spend quite a lot of time doing the opposite. Well done. We're going to do our last two. Remember, spend a bit longer on the bits that feel the most unpleasant if you've got any. Great work. And then we've just got one last exercise on the roller or whatever you've made. If you can manage that, that would be lovely. So elbows are down on the mat, hands on that pelvis hip area. Let feet come to hip distance. We're going to let one foot lift so the knees above the hip. Do a little tilt so your lower back is towards the mat, the roller, whatever it is, or the leg comes up to meet it. Good. Now any back issues, you might want to stay with this. If this feels a bit too much for you at any point, Please lower one foot than the other. Just make sure the knees above the hip is easy to cheat and draw in. Make sure the knees above hip, shins parallel to the feet. If this is enough for you, stay here and breathe. To work harder, we're going to let one foot tip towards or in an imaginary pool of water at the bottom of the mat, then come back in. If you want a breathing pattern, Exhale to toe tap, inhale to come back. Good. Now the closer to your bum, the pool of water is, the easier. So the further away you are tapping, the harder you have to work. Any discomfort to your back, please make it smaller. Good. And it might even be that it's the heel touching down to the floor rather than the toe. See how we feel. Great work. Well done. And depending on your surface, if you are on the mat, you might easily be able to let 
elbows lift them hover. If you are on a roller, you probably won't. If you are on a roller that you've made yourself, it will be a bit of an in-between one, depending on how well you made your roller. As long as you breathe, that's the important thing. Last two or three. Well done. And when you are done evenly, don't rush to get there. Lower one foot, then the other. We're going to come off your roller or whatever you've got instead. If you need to pop it to one side and then just let your knees have a little hug and rock from side to side. Or if you'd rather let your legs extend and just have that little relax, please do. Whatever your body feels like it wants the most at the moment. Good. We're just going to do a little hip roll. So let feet come down to the mat, feet and knees together, hands to your side. Let your knees go to one side. Keep your feet together as though you're wearing one big sock. Try and turn away from your knees if you can. Good. Switching sides, please. Well done. Come to that first side again. As long as it feels okay, try and keep the knees and thighs together, but straighten that top leg. It just puts a bit more weight into that hip roll, so you might get a bit further. Let the knee bend, slowly come over. Knees and thighs together, straightening the top leg, just increases the weight. Well done. Let that leg come back in, coming back to the centre. Well done. We're going to come to a position on our side. We're going to start with a nice straight line. So you might need to just make sure you've got some space. Coming to a nice straight line. If you want anything for your head, if you normally do, please add it. But I'm trusting that you're quite good at knowing yourself by now. So if you glance down, you might just about see your feet. Other body parts might be in the way, but that's where we're wanting them to be. Top shoulder soft, hand on your side ideally. If that makes you wobble too much, pop the fingers down. Try and think about the waist, trying to lift up from the mat. That can be the hardest bit to make you wobble. Good. Inhale to prepare. As you exhale, top leg lifts, flex the foot, heel goes away. Inhale to lower. Good. Well done. So the leg doesn't need to go much past the hip. Just a tiny bit higher. Lovely. Good. If you're feeling balanced enough, can that top arm go over as well? Arm to ear, ideally. So really trying to get that maximum range of movement from the shoulder. Great work. So remember that bars of flowers, bottle of wine, whatever it might be behind your lower back that you do not want to spill. Good. Last couple. And we're just going to change it slightly. Now we've got our balance. So just relax in this position. Your feet are now going to come to a V shape. So because your feet are in a V, your bottom leg has had to lift up a little bit from the mat. So I'll just show you again, we're in this position. Feet coming to a V means that bottom leg is lifting slightly. Try and make sure that those toes aren't really, really squashed into the mat. They're just gently there. Same as we did before, inhale to prepare. As you exhale, top leg lifts. Inhale to lower. So really keeping that angle on the foot, but try and keep the pelvis level. Good. Can we start to see if that arm can add as well? 
arm and leg lifts, arm and leg lowers. Good. So that turn out, maybe feel quads more, area around the knee for some of those glutes. And we're going to challenge our stability a little bit more. Last two, can we keep the leg in the air? So when your leg is in the air, just let your hands come down to have a little bit of a balance. Good. Can the leg in the air go forward and back? Get a good squeeze as it goes back. Lovely. Five, four, three, two, one. And now we're down. Isn't that nice? Give that glute a good look. We're going to come to sort of a propped up position, if you like. So you've got your elbow underneath the shoulder. Knees are bending, so your feet are in line with your foot. So quite strong in that shoulder position. We're not having the rest, we're strong in that position. Knees bend, feet in line with your foot. To start with, think where the rib cage is. And the big cage get quite close to the mat and then push away. Good, so this is for that QL muscle in that lower back, doing quite a lot of backs today with the boulder as well. Lovely, we're going to add another exercise with this if we can. We really need to make sure that pelvis stays still, so focus on that bars of flowers, make sure we're not going to spill it. Just pause with the rib cage near the mat. This time, when the rib cage lifts, can the knee lift, feet stay together, don't let that hip bone go back. So lower the knee, drop the rib cage. Knee lifts, rib cage lifts, perfect. Well done. So keep it nice and slow and controlled. And if it's confusing your brain a bit too much doing both exercises together, pick your favourite. Lovely. Last three, please. Well done, great work. And after this last one, lower down, we're going to slowly come to our other side, give anything a little more pull if it needs. Excuse me, trying to find my water bottle. So come to that straight line to start with, please, to help with our balance. So we're making that nice straight line down the mat. If you go on stairs, you might just about see your feet. Top shoulder nice and soft. Belt gently drawing in if we can. Inhale to prepare. As you exhale, top leg lifts. Heel goes away. Inhale to lower. Good. So exhaling on the effort if we can. We might feel a bit wobbly along this side. Now we're laying on the side that's done the hard work. Remember that bars of flowers. And can we start to add the arm? Arm and leg lift, arm to ear if we can. Inhale to lower. Good. Great work. Really lengthening, trying to get one heel to one side of the room, fingertips to the other, get that maximum range. Good, last three please. Hopefully we'll be feeling nice and balanced on this side then. Well done. And then when you are ready, same sort of thing, but this time we let our feet come into a V shape, if you remember. So we're starting our feet together, feet in a V shape, so the bottom leg has to lift. Try and make sure your bottom toes aren't too firmly into the mat. Keep that bars of flowers behind you when you are ready. Inhale to prepare. 
Exhale, top leg lifts. Inhale, let it lower. So that toes pointing sort of more diagonal, but the legs definitely going up as it did before. Try not to spill that bars of flats. Can we have that top arm? So arm and leg lifts together and they lower down. Good. Well done. Good. Last two. And then we're going to leave the leg there. Let the arm come down, help us to balance. Can the leg go forward and back? Good, well done. Last five, four, three, two, one. Lower down, give anything a rub that needs it. And then we're going to slowly come up. So we're on that shoulder. Make sure we've got the elbow under the shoulder so we're quite strong. Knee the bent, feet in line with your wall. Good. Rib cage, let it lift up as far from the mat as you can and then lower it down. Good. So just doing a few of these to get that lower back working on this side. Remember that bars of flowers, try and keep that hip bone from dropping back. The next time the rib cage drops, just take a second because this time as the rib cage lifts, can the knee lift as well. Good, so we're just combining this side plank variation with a plan exercise. Makes it harder for that pelvis to stay stable. Well done. Great work. Coming to our last three, please. Good. Well done. And then when you are done, lower down. Give anything to circles of the shoulders might help. We're going to eventually come to all fours, so take your time. When we all fours, knees are on the hips, wrists on the shoulders. Look to your knees, get your spine to the ceiling in extent in that flexion. Apologies if my jumpers in my face, so I can't hear you, can't hear me. And then dip the other way. Good. So just moving between that flexion and the extension, getting that maximum move. And if it feels okay for you, the next time you will look to your knees, spine to the ceiling. Let your bum drop to your heel. Feel that stretch in the lumbar spine. Good. Moving through those positions again. Well done. And then before we come to standing, I just want to give the hip flexors a little bit of an opening. So I imagine some of them will have been sat more than usual with a feet at home more. So come to upright kneeling, let one foot come forward so that ankle is further forward than the knee. Perfect. Bucket of water tips out of that back of the bucket so we get that opening into the hip. If we can, let the weight come forward, reach up, shoulders drop, rotate to one side, good, back to the centre, rotate to the other, back to the centre, lower the arms, weight comes back, switch, opposite foot forward, 
ankle further forward than the knee, bucket of water tips out of the back of the bucket to open the hip more, let the weight come forward, reach up, shoulders drop, rotate to one side, back to the centre, rotate to the other, back to the centre, lower the arms, weight comes back, use that leg to help you stand if that's suitable for you, otherwise come up another way if you would prefer, well done. Now depending on how your balance was earlier, if you have got a proper roller, they can be good to help you balance, or if you want to move near a wall or something, like that, I will understand if I see you go slightly off screen. We're going to come and let our feet come to that V shape again. If this puts too much pressure on your knees at any point, just work in parallel. So we're basically going to work on the exercise we did laying on our side, all working Pilates that we do see the kneeling line is basically so that we can hopefully do it standing to make it functional. So if it's not good for you, come to parallel. Coming so if we can, heels together, toes pointing out. Weight comes into one leg, squeeze that glue as we did before. Inhale to prepare. As you exhale, that leg lifts. Inhale to lower. So try and not let that foot touch the mat. But do please breathe. Good. So just as we did laying on our side. If doing this and breathing is enough, do this and breathe. If you want to add that arm as well, please do. It might throw you off balance more because one side of your body is working more than the other. Last two. And then can we hold with that leg lifted? Arm goes wherever you would like and the leg goes forward and back. Brilliant. Good. Five, four, three, two, one. Lower down, have a shake. And isn't that interesting how laying it was the leg doing the work that hurts? When we do it standing, it's off to the supporting one that tells us off that halfway there, nearly done. So letting your feet come back to that V shape, this side might be wobbly of remember, so take it steady. Weight into that other leg. When you are ready, inhale to prepare. As you exhale. Exhale on the effort, inhale to come in. Keep going, let us move our sense on the bit, have we relaxed? Go. Well done. If add the arm to ear and lower down. Good. So the arm getting to the ear might not seem as easy because gravity isn't there to help it. Excellent. Last two. Hold that last one lifted. The arm can go wherever you would like and the leg go forward and back. Breathe. Think nice thoughts. Great work. Coming to our last five, four, three, two, one. Lower down, have a shake. Isn't that a nice one? Taken from bar pilates, as in ballet bar rather than drinking bar, I'm afraid. Come back to that feet at parallel position for me. One last one before we get ourselves in good posture to finish. Crown of the head to the ceiling, shoulders back and down. We're going to let one heel lift up off the mat. Opposite arm to shoulder height, lower bow step. Opposite heel and arm float and lower. Good. Stick with this if it's enough to work harder and the whole foot lift so the knee is in line with the hip. So very much that slow motion movement. Good. Keep growing tall, try and be the tallest person in the room. 
Think how your ankles are feeling. If they're having a good wobble doing this, then stick with it. If they're feeling stable, the next time we come to here, can that supporting heel lift them lower? Excellent. One side might be a little bit easier than the other. I have a wobble on that side. Good. Well done. Last one or two. And then when you are done evenly, lower down, have a little shake, little spin, anything that feels like it needs a little release off, make sure you let it. And then we're just going to come and stand with feet at hip distance to finish. Chair, we've got that pointing down from each hip then to the second chair. Make sure the weight's even through the feet. So imagine a triangle, big toe, little toe to heels, the weight's even. Make sure those knees are gently softened, so not locked, gently softened. Bucket to water in the pelvis, do those gentle tilts. Water tips out of the front and back of the bucket. Rest in the middle of those positions, try and give a little squeeze through the glutes. Grow tall, try and be the tallest person in the room. Let your shoulders float to your ears and drop with a thud. Ah, sound effects optional. Third ah, time, lucky. Good. We've got that connection through the shoulders, so middle finger roughly in line with side seam of your trouser. Good. Close your eyes if you're happy to do so. Have a little scan through the feet. Is the weight even? Pause of the feet and the heels. Right to left foot, big toe to little toe. Good. Check that belt, just gently engage. Check that pelvic floor is connected. Natural breathing pattern, please. And when you are ready, let your eyes open. Put both sides of your mouth up and your hands together. Well done everyone, because that was a bit of a tough one. Lots of work on the glutes, so well done. Thank you. Thank you Thank very much. Thank you. Yeah, I that, Bye. Mm -hmm. Right, I will hopefully see lots of you next week. Happy yeah. Easter. Happy Easter. Bye. Bye. Bye.